Hey guys, so in this video we're going to start talking about pressure and atmospheric pressure, both of which are huge topics in this chapter. Let's check it out. Alright, so pressure is defined as force divided by area. Force divided by area. So it's a measurement of how much a particular force is spread out over a surface area. And it has units of Newton per square meter, and that's because force is measured in Newtons and area is measured in square meters. Now they got tired of writing Newtons per square meters over and over again, so they decided to call this something, and this is called a Pascal. Pascal, named after Mr. Pascal, abbreviated PA, and it just means that if you have one Pascal, you have one Newton per square meter. Let's look at a quick example here. So two identical wood blocks, these two guys here, one and two, um, and it specifies here that they are they have um, 800 kilograms per cubic meter. Hopefully right away you identify that this is density because of the units. It doesn't say that, but you need to know that. So the density, which is rho, Greek letter rho, is 800 kilograms per cubic meter. This is why we covered density earlier. And these are the dimensions of the blocks. So 0.2 uh, by 0.2 by one. So if you notice, this is the long side here. So this must be one meter. And these guys here will be the 0.2s meters. And here it's the, it's just oriented in a different direction. This is the long side, so this is going to be one meter, and this must be 0.2 height, and the depth here must be 0.2 as well. Okay, so they're placed outdoors, meaning that there's a bunch of air around them, and horizontal surface uh, on horizontal surfaces. So the idea is that it's placed on um, sort of the surface here, the floor, something like that. We want to know the pressure of each block on the surfaces that they sit on. So the idea is that if you have a block and it sits on a surface, it is pushing against the surface and it's applying a pressure. Why? Because there is a force over an area. And then whenever you have a force over an area, you have a pressure. So I want to know how much pressure is this block over here applying on the surface right underneath, underneath it. So you might imagine that it looks kind of like that, right? If you draw sort of the 3D version here. Um, and you might imagine that there's the, the bottom here of this guy is also pushing against the surface, against the floor. And I want to know the pressure. So we're calculating pressure. Pressure against the floor, let's call that PF. How do we find pressure? Well, the equation for pressure is force over area. So let's write that. It's the amount of force that the block applies on the floor divided by the area, um, the area that they're touching. How much area is, the, is there between the two of them, which is just this area down here, the area of interaction. Okay, so, so what is the force? This block pushes against the floor because it has weight, because of gravity, right? So gravity pulls on the block down, the earth pulls down the block, the block pulls on the, on the table or on the surface or on the floor. So the force that's causing the block to push against the surface is mg. So I'm just going to rename this to mg. And this happens a lot, by the way, that the force on a pressure problem is the weight force divided by the area, and I can just sort of start plugging in that the area here is going to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, okay? Obviously, we know gravity is 9.8. Uh, for the sake of this problem, to keep it simple, we're going to use that gravity is approximately 10 meters per second squared to make our lives easier, but I still have to find the mass. And once I find a mass, I plug it in and we're done. How do we find mass? You may remember that if you have density, which you do, and if you have volume, which you do, you can find mass because, because density is mass over volume. Therefore, mass is density times volume. Now, please don't get the little p, uh, the little curvy Greek p, uh, which is rho confused, that's, that's density. Don't get that confused with big P, pressure. Okay, those are different things. It's unfortunate that they look so similar. So do I have pressure and volume? Yes, so that I can find, I'm sorry, do I have density? See, I just did it. Do I have density and volume? We do. So we're gonna be able to just plug all this stuff to, uh, in and figure out the mass. So let's do that real quick. Mass is going to be density, which is 800 kilograms per cubic meter. Remember to always put 
units like this, so it's easier to cancel, times the volume. The volume is just the three sides multiplied, so 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 1.0, and because this is meter, 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 this is cubic meter, and this is nice because cubic meter cancels here, and we end up with the mass. The mass will be, the mass will be, um, I have it here, 32 kilograms. Now that I have the mass, I can plug it in here, 32, gravity is 10, this is 0 0.04, and if you do this entire thing, you get that the pressure is 8,000. Now the question is, what are the units here? Well, because I'm using the standard units, this is just going to be Pascal. Now if you, don't, if you don't see that, just keep in mind that mg is, because this is in kilograms, and this is in meters per second squared, this mg here is in newtons, and this was meter and meter, so this is meter squared. So newtons per meter squared gives you a pascal. So that is the answer to this one, okay? Now, I'm gonna do the second one in a different way so you can see another way that you could have done this that is gonna be a little bit easier and it's gonna be helpful later on. But this is sort of the, the, the most straightforward way you could have done it without anything fancy. Okay, so let's do this a little bit different. And the first thing you might be wondering is, isn't it just the same thing because it's the same block? Well, pressure is force over area. And while the force is the same because the mass is the same because it's the same block, right? The area is different. The floor is touching, is interacting with the surface underneath it um, via a much larger area. So the area that, that they uh, are touching against each other is much bigger. And if the area is bigger, you might imagine that the pressure will be smaller, okay? The pressure will be smaller. But we're going to calculate this a little bit different. So the pressure with the floor is still going to be the force against the floor divided by the area. And the force against the floor, by the way, is still mg divided by the area. But I'm going to show you something a little bit different now. So what is the area? The area is the are these two dimensions here, right? These two dimensions here. Not all three of them, but just two which is the, um, the width times the depth, okay? So let's leave it there. And then mass, remember we just did this here. Mass is right here. Mass is density times volume. But what is volume? Volume is width times depth times height, okay? Width, depth, and height. So I can plug in this stuff in here and I can say the M is going to become uh, rho W D H don't forget the G over here divided by W times D okay and this is the only time I'm going to do this just to show you this is actually very helpful for you W cancel D cancels and you're left with you're left with that the pressure against the floor is going to be rho Rho, not P, this is Rho, be careful. Um, and I'm going to just move the letters a little bit here. Rho G H. Rho G H. So this is interesting because the pressure actually does not depend on the area. It only depends on how high this thing is. Why doesn't the pressure depend on the area? Well, as you have a bigger base, you have a bigger object, but that force is being distributed over a bigger area. So it doesn't really matter. Um, it only matters what the height of the object is. And that's good news because if you know this, this question is much simpler to solve because you can just plug a bunch of stuff in here. Let me move this up a little bit. So the density is 800, gravity is 10, and the height is 0.2. And if you do this, um, if you do this, you get that this is 8,000 divided by 5. This is going to be 1,600 Pascal. 1,600 Pascal. And notice that this is a smaller number than the other number over here. And that's because even though it's the same mass, therefore the same weight, it just, it's distributed over a bigger surface area, so there's less pressure. Okay, so that's a quick example of how pressure works and two different ways you can calculate it. And I even sort of showed you or derived um, this nice equation that you can use. And this equation is going to come back later. So that's good news. 
Okay, so now let's talk about something else. And this is the last point I'm gonna make here. So, and just like how you can have an object that is applying pressure against a surface, you can also have air molecules around objects applying pressure on them um, as well. So that is called atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure due to air molecules around you that are pushing against you or against an object, okay? So the idea is that a box will apply pressure on the floor, but then air molecules directly above will apply pressure on the object, all right? And that pressure has a standard value at sea level. So what does that mean? That means that the amount of pressure that the air exerts on you actually changes if you go, let's say, up a mountain, but if you're sitting, hanging out next to the ocean, you know for a fact that that pressure has to be 1.1 times 10 to the fifth pascals. It's a standard value that we're always going to assume. If they don't give us a pressure, we're going to assume that the pressure of air around us is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascal. And this is the pressure of air. Sometimes I'll refer to this as P air. Sounds funny, it's some French dude. So pressure of air, P air. And that's the amount. Sometimes it gets simplified as 10 to the fifth pascal, uh, but typically you do have to remember the 1.01, kind of annoying. Um, now they got tired of writing this over and over because it's a big ugly number, and they decided to invent this thing called a 1 ATM. So 1 ATM just standards for 1.01 times 10 to the fifth. It's sort of a shortcut because they got lazy. Um, you can also have pressure in British units. So instead of Pascal, which remember, Pascal is Newton per square meter. You can have it in pounds per square inch. And you can also have it in terms of millimeters of millimeters of mercury, right? 760 millimeters of mercury. You see that in lab when you're doing chemistry. Okay, so you should know all of these so you can convert between them. But remember that this is the standard units one. So this is the one that's gonna go into all your equations. So if I give you 760 millimeters of mercury, you have to, you have to convert this into Pascal. Or if I give you any millimeters of mercury, you have to convert that into Pascal. All right, so let's do a quick example to drive this point home. So it says for the blocks above, calculate the force applied by the air above them um, to their top surface. So we have these blocks. I'm gonna draw them both real quick. And I wanna know, I wanna know the force applied by the air above them. So there's a bunch of air molecules everywhere. And I wanna know how much force is the air applying to their top surface. So how much force is air applying here? Now to be clear, air is applying force to all sides um, of this block, the back as well, um, except the bottom because the bottom is touching the surface, right? But the air is applying everywhere, but I just wanna know how much force is applied to the top. So what is the force on the top? For, for part B, it's the same thing, except that it's laid out a little bit differently. So it looks sort of like this. And I want to know how much force is applied to the top surface over here. F top. Cool. And so how are we going to do this? We're going to do this using the fact that we know what the pressure of air around you is uh, most of the time. We can assume that pressure is going to be, the pressure of air is the atmospheric pressure, which is 1.01 times 10 to the 15th. And if we know that and we know the area, we can find the force. Let me show you. That's because pressure is force over area. And if I'm looking for force and I have the other two, I can rewrite that force is pressure times area, okay? So the pressure will be the pressure of air up here, which is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. And the area is the area, if you remember the dimensions here were 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and the height was one. But if I want the top surface, I'm gonna use this in this measurement, these two measurements here. So 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, it's meters times meters, so it's square meters. And if I multiply this, I get 4,040 Newtons. Now, notice how I use the standard unit for pressure. I use the standard unit for area. Therefore, when you combine those two, you're gonna get the standard unit Newtons for force. I don't have to um, sort of combine those two and figure out 
um, do dimension analysis and figure out what unit gets um, left out at the end here. Because if I'm using standard units as an input, I'm going to get the standard unit for the output. So 4,000 newtons, you might be thinking that's a lot of force, and it is a lot of force. It's the equivalent of having something that is about 400 kilograms on top of you, or roughly 880 pounds, right? And 20 by 20 is a square about this big, and if you have 800 pounds on top of this, it's very heavy. Um, and does that make sense? Air is very light. How come it's going to be so heavy on top of you? Well, the reason it's so heavy on top of you is because there's a huge column of air that starts from right over on top of you all the way to the atmosphere, right? So, you know, thousands of, uh, of um, or many, many miles above you. So it's a lot of air, so it's pretty heavy. It's up to a lot. You're just used to it, so it doesn't bother you um, at all. All right, so for the second one, it's going to be very similar, but we're just going to um, use different numbers. So the force, remember, we can just start from here. Force is pressure times area. The pressure is 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth. And the area now is going to be the long one, the long dimension here, which is 1, and the one of the smaller dimensions, which is 0.2. So this is going to be 1 times 0.2 square meters, okay? And this means that the pressure, this means that the pressure will be, the pressure will be, I have it here, I'm sorry, the force will be 20,200 newtons. Now, notice that the force here turned out to be much greater than the force here. Why? Well, because there's more air on top of you, right? That top base, that top area of this uh, of this block is supporting a lot more air under um, on top of it. Therefore, it's more force, and you can also think of this as more weight. Essentially, what we're doing here is calculating the weight of air on top of you. All right. So that's how this works. Let's keep going.